This is lesson 5-6, which is inverse relations and functions. My essential question is, how can you find the inverse of a function and verify the two functions are inverses? So the example one says, to, says, what is the inverse of the relation represented in the table? So in order to take a table and find the inverse, all we need to do is flip the x's and the y's. So my x's were negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Those become my y's. And then my y's become my x's. So we can do that for any table that we're given. We can do that for any relation that we have. But what we have to understand is in order for something to be a um, inverse function, we then have to test to see if it is a function. So if we look at our original table, um, we would say, yes, this is a function because all the x's are different. So we don't have an x going to two different y's. But if we look over here at the inverse, we look and we see we have one that goes to two different numbers. So this would no not be a function. So this would be an inverse, but not an inverse function. It's an inverse relation. Okay, so how do we find an equation of an inverse relation? So how can we represent the inverse relation of f? So f of x equals x squared. So what we do to find the inverse, first of all, it helps to rewrite this as y equals x squared. And then what we're going to, that's bad, too. Let's try that again. Okay, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to switch the x and the y, just like we did on the previous table. So we're going to write this as x equals y squared, and then we solve for y. So to solve for y, we would take the square root of both sides, and we know when we take the square root of something, we have two answers. We have a positive and negative square root of x. So that would be our inverse of um, x squared. So then it says, how are the graphs of y equals x squared and y equals plus or minus square root of x related? So we're going to look at that on the next slide. So graphs of inverses are reflected over the y equals x line. So you're, you're always going to see reflection if you um, graph them. So you can see the blue graph shows us y equals x squared. Um, and we can see the domain and range, and then we can see the inverse of f is the orange or the red graph that's kind of the parabola on its side. So if we think about the domain of our blue graph would be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range it states here is, oops, the range <laughs> is from zero to infinity. So if you go over to your inverse, those are going to flip. So the domain is now going to be from 0 to infinity. And you can see that's true because our graph is only going to be on the right side of our graph. And the range would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, but we need to note that while this is an inverse, it's not an inverse function because the, the red graph, the red parabola on its side does not pass the vertical line test. Okay, so it says, to can we consider restricting the domain of f of x equals x squared, so that way we will have an inverse function, okay? So you can kind of see what we did down here. So if we change it, so if we take the domain of f of x equals x squared, instead of opening it up to all real numbers, what if we just say that it's from 0 to infinity? So that creates the half of a parabola, that y equals f of x, and then that would mean that when we find the inverse, it's only going to be half of that, so therefore it will be a function. So we can restrict the domain of different functions so that we have an inverse function. Okay, so the next one is practice finding um, the inverse algebraically. So again, I'm going to change that to y for both of these. And then we find this by switching the x and the y. So I'm going to write x equals oops, the square root of y minus 2. So if we're trying to find the inverse, we would square both sides. So now I have x squared equals y minus 2. And then we're going to add 2 to both sides. 
So that would be y equals x squared plus 2. The notation for inverse is a little negative 1 as um, kind of like an exponent. So we say f of f to the negative 1, so that's the inverse of f of x, that's how we say it, would be equal to x squared plus 2. Okay, and then finding an equation, so for part b, we're going to do the same thing, x equals negative cube root of 4y. So we want to get rid of that cube root, so we're going to cube both sides. And remember when I cube something um, that's negative, it's going to stay negative. So the cube root's going to go away, but this is going to be negative 4y. And then we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. So that means the inverse for part b would be equal to x squared over 4, and I'm just going to put the negative, oops, there, let's write it like this. We usually like to write the negative in the numerator, okay, but you could write it in the denominator if you want to. Okay, and so then the last thing is, how do we verify that two functions are inverses? So in order for, um, if in order to verify, we have to take f of g of x, and that should be equal to g of f of x, because we know that's not always the case, but it is the case if you have two inverse functions. So we take f of x of g of x, f of g of x and g of f of x, and they should both equal x when simplified, okay? So we're gonna do that. Let's do f of g first. So f of g, I'm gonna take the square root of x minus five and plug it in where x is. So this would be the square root of x minus five squared plus five. So if we simplify that, my first step would be to cancel the square root and the squared. So that would give me x minus five plus five and then the negative 5 and positive 5 are going to cancel, so we get x. Now I'm going to do g of f of x. So that would be taking x squared plus 5 and pl plugging it in for the x. So this would be x squared plus 5 minus 5. So the first thing I could do there is cancel the 5s. So then I'd be left with the square root of x squared, which we know is just x. So both of those work, so we would say, yes, they are inverses. If you do f of g or g of f and they don't both equal x, then you're showing that they are not inverse functions. Okay, so that 